All right. Am I willing to commit the membership covenant? A covenant is a solemn agreement entered into by two people or groups. Uh, here Jehoiada made a covenant between the Lord, the king, the people, that they should be the Lord's people, and also between the king and his people. So a covenant is a solemn agreement entered into by two people or groups. There are many covenants listed in the scripture. I'm not going to go through them because it's going to take too much time. Uh, it's important to understand that a true covenant relationship must be entered into with the heart, and it's a passionate commitment. Uh, the covenant uh, is written, signed by people, sealed by the leaders. The written covenant was witnessed in Nehemiah 9.38. The leaders sealed it as a sign of accountability. Why do so many churches have so many people on their membership roles but evidence no commitment and no conversion? Primarily because there are no expectations placed on membership. So you get what you ask for. The Apostle Paul mentions two types of commitments in 2 Corinthians 8, 5. And not only as we had hoped, but they gave themselves to the Lord. First they gave themselves to the Lord and to us. So the starting point commitment in your spiritual journey is giving yourself to the Lord. There's no spiritual life to give yourself to the Lord. Yes. I'm sorry, what form are you on for that? We are on number six membership covenant so that's in your notes oh, okay. your note packet but I wanted you to have your covenant out because we're going to do that real quick I'm sorry I, I, I uh, should have mentioned that the second commitment mentioned in Second Corinthians 8 is a commitment to fellowship commitment to fellowship there can be no spiritual growth and maturity until you are committed to other Christians Jesus said that our love for each other was a test of discipleship. John 15, verses 34 and 35. How is our love demonstrated? Uh, 1 John 3, 16. Because we know love, because he laid down his life for us, he also ought to lay down our lives for each other. How do we lay down our lives for each other? Oh, we love one another, pray for one another, encourage one another, admonish one another, treat one another, wait for one another, serve one another, teach one another, comfort one another, edify one another, encourage one another, exhort one another, accept one another, be hospitable to one another, minister to one another, honor one another, bear one another's burdens, esteem one another, forgive one another, sing to one another, submit to one another, be devoted to one another, have peace with one another, live in harmony with one another, receive one another. Got it? Oh. <laughs> all of these commands are what membership in the local body is all about. They are the responsibilities of membership. So we expect of members only what the Bible clearly expects of all believers. So the membership covenant is a summary of these expectations. The most important part of a marriage ceremony is when the man and woman exchange vows, making certain promises to each other before God and witnesses. The essence of church membership is contained in the willingness to commit to the membership covenant. Throughout church history, spiritual covenants have been made between people for mutual edification and accountability. This membership covenant is a written, do written document stating your commitment to the body of believers known as New Hope Church. Agreeing with and signing the covenant is a requirement of membership in the body. You are welcome to attend and participate in most of the functions of the body, but to be a member, you must covenant with one another to the following things. So look at your membership covenant and your notes. First of all, I will protect the unity of my church by acting in love toward other members of the body in attendance, by refusing to gossip, by following the leaders. Our unity is critical because our anointing is directly tied to our unity. Amen. The devil can't destroy us from the outside. The gates of hell can never prevail against the church. But a house divided against itself can never stand. So the, what the devil likes to do is to create striving and contending, usually through innuendo and gossip, false accusations and rumors. If someone comes to you and says, uh, you know, Vinny, we need to pray for Mark. Amen. Because he's, you know, he, I saw him do this, and he said that, and he did that, and he's really got issues. We really need to pray for Mark. What I have just done 
is defiled vinegar. And if Mark wasn't present there to defend himself or to speak for himself, then that's gossip. Amen. If somebody comes to you and says, I got a problem with so-and-so, and they, before they get the rest of it out of their mouth, grab them by the hand and say, come here. Yeah. Hey, Mark, yeah. come here. Nick's got a problem he wants to talk to you about. You do that one time, It'll stop the gossip mill from coming to your doorside. Amen. It'll stop it. I, I, I was at, I used to work for the phone company in the director assistant's office. Can you imagine that gaggle of hens? <laughs> and I was at the break table. There was a relatively new person that was there. And we had a supervisor. Her name was Kathy. And Kathy was really strict and kind of hard nosed. And she didn't have a, she wasn't a warm, fuzzy person. But she knew her stuff. And so Kathy had gotten on one of the operators, and so they were sitting around the table, and they were talking, and everybody was just just throwing stones at Kathy. And then this girl came on break, and she sat down, and she sat there, and she was listening to this for about a minute or two, and she said, you know what? Everybody has said something negative about Kathy. Let's go around the table, and let's everybody say what we like about Kathy. I'll start. And she said, you know, when I first came here, Kathy was the person who helped me to understand how to get along in this office and what the expectations were. And I really appreciated that. How about you? Yeah. <laughs> and the person kind of was startled for a minute and they said, well, uh, actually, you know, she did blah, 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 blah. And she went right around the table and, and the whole atmosphere at the table turned. Awesome. How cool is that? Wish believers would do that. Yeah. We need to be careful about that. So we need to guard the unity of our church. If anybody says, you know, i got a real problem with pastor, come on, let's go talk to the pastor. Right. Don't receive gossip or innuendo. Act in love toward brothers and sisters. You're going to get offended. Someone's going to sit in your seat. <laughs> I know you've got a favorite place you like to sit. It's a habit. We all love to sit in the same place. And someone's going to be there sitting in your seat. And don't stare eyeballs at them, you know, and get mad at them. My Bible was there. That seat is safe. <laughs> really? There's plenty of other places. Just move along. Yes. It's okay. It's not a big deal. I'll protect the unity of my church and also by following the leaders. I have a heart that's submitted. Look, if there's anything that any leader ever tells you to say or do that doesn't agree with Scripture, you confront that issue right then and there. If you have trouble with a, a direction that we're going, come talk to me. Because maybe I can shine a light or a perspective on it that you may not see or understand. Or maybe you'll help me to see something that I didn't see, and you'll help me to grow as a leader. I will protect the unity of my church. I will share the responsibility of my church by praying for its growth and maturity, by inviting the unchurched to attend, by warmly welcoming those who visit. So I'm gonna, I want to see the church grow, and it's not Pastor Nick's church. It's our church. It's my church. It's your church. It's God's church. Let's help God's church grow. So let's pray. Let's uh, reach out to people in our circle of influence. Let's don't just sit like a log in your seat and not move. Get up, greet people. Warmly welcome them. Make them feel at home. If you see somebody sitting all by themselves and they look lonely, oh, go sit down next to them. Help people. I will serve the ministry of my church by discovering my gifts and talents and utilizing them to edify the body and minister to the community by being equipped to serve the Lord and the leadership of my church by developing a servant's heart. So in other words, I'm going to get involved. I'm going to do what I can with the gifts God's given me to help the ministry that God's called me to be a part of. Remember, we're all members of the body and every body had part has a part to play that brings life to the body. So you're important. Even if you're the hangnail on the body, you serve a purpose. There's a reason for your being. Give yourself. Be involved. I will support the testimony of my church by attending faithfully, by living a godly life, by giving regularly. So, you know, you don't have to wake up Sunday morning and wonder if I'm going to church. No, I'm a part of the body. I'm going to be a part. I'm going to attend. I am going to do my best to live a life that reflects the beauty of the holiness of God. I am going to give regularly to the church. We believe and practice the principle of tithing as a church. 
We practice it personally. We believe it is scriptural. Uh, I'm going to teach on it sometime in the near future. But we believe in, in tithing. We believe every person should tithe and should give into the church. But the lights don't stay on here because uh, Duke Energy just likes us. There is a mortgage to pay. we got to finish paying the mortgage. Uh, I get hungry from time to time. I need my salary. But we need to support the testimony of the church. But we also take the first 10 of everything that's given to the general income of this church, and we tie that to missions. And that's part of how we support our mission outreach of our church. The first 10, before we pay a single bill, we take 10% out of our offerings that are given for the support of the church, and we give that into other fields into, to minister elsewhere because we believe in the principle of tithing. We practice it as a church body, we practice it individually. I will give of my time, talent, and resources for God's global purposes by supporting the mission, vision, and program of the church, praying for the missionaries. We send out a, a Pastor Barry sends out an email every Monday. If you're not on the email list, all you have to do is send an email to prayer at newhopepalmharbor.com. If you want to reach any of the pastors, their first name, Nick at newhopepalmharbor.com, Karen at newhopepalmharbor.com, Barry at newhopepalmharbor.com, John, J-O-N, at newhopepalmharbor.com, Brian at newhopepalmharbor.com. Prayer at newholepowermover.com. You can send your prayer request in. Tell them to sign you up to be on the prayer list, and then you'll receive prayer emails. Every Monday, Pastor Barry sends out an email with all the missionary prayer needs, so we can be praying weekly for our missionaries. It's a great tool, great tool. Be a part of that. Support, pray, give, go. Okay, so you have the membership covenant. Everybody shares in the responsibility. Everybody is a part. Here's the covenant that you'll be signing if you so aren't so inclined to do. Having received Jesus as my Lord and Savior and been water baptized, remember if you haven't been water baptized, see me afterwards, and being in agreement with New Hope's statement of faith, which we went over, the vision of the leadership, which we've been over, the structure of the church, which we went over, I am now led by the Holy Spirit to unite with New Hope Church family. In doing so, I commit myself to God and to the other members to do the following, and then, which is what we just went over. You have to be born again, water baptized, sin salvation, and then in agreement with the vision, mission, and leadership of the church. So you may be thinking that's a lot to expect of people. The church is called to be the company of the committed, committed to the Lord Jesus Christ, be committed to one another, committed to his work, committed to walk in obedience. So I'm only asking you what your Bible asks of you. Love and be wholeheartedly committed to the Lord Jesus Christ. Love and be wholeheartedly committed to one another. You see, you're already committed to something. The question is, what are you wholeheartedly committed to? And what are you half-heartedly committed to? Who's going to get your commitment? Who will take your time, your talent, and your treasure? If I, as your pastor, don't ask you to commit to anything, then you must assume that everything else in life is more important. But I would tell you that your spiritual life and growing in the depth of your relationship with Jesus and to one another is the highest priority. And by his grace, I'll help us to fulfill the covenant we make. So if you are so inclined, if you believe this is where the Lord wants to plant you, if you're ready to make that commitment, there are two pieces of paper. There is the covenant, and there's the membership application. Each individual, if you're married, each individual fills out the application and signs the covenant. And you return it to me, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. You return it to me. And then you'll be contacted by one of the elders of the church. And they'll call you and meet with you after a service or before a service, what's convenient to you in the next couple of weeks. And then once we get all the covenants back, then, uh, then we will receive you into membership. And we're going to do that the last Sunday of the month. As a matter of fact, why don't you take out your, on the, So you, you see your new, your application, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
And then there's a sheet that's called special instructions. Is this a Okay, you have a sheet that's called special instructions. Pull that out. It should be on your left side. they are encouraged to take personal membership in the church. If you have been present for all the membership sessions, since it's tonight, you're all present, I think. Have you all been present? Yeah. Okay. Uh, then you're welcome to complete the forms immediately and turn them in to me this weekend. If you miss any of the teachings, uh, we will get all of these, this session uploaded uh, onto the website. It will be under the media section. And uh, then you can listen to them and fill out the uh, answer sheets and turn them in. That will bear witness that you were here. All the firm forms need to be turned in by Sunday, March the 12th. So a week from this coming Sunday. So we need the application of the covenants return. And then we will receive you into membership Sunday morning, March the 26th, which is the last Sunday of the month. We ask you to be present to sit close to the front. We'll call you forward introduce you to the church, you're going to sign the membership role, uh, the elders will be there, they'll greet you, you'll stay up in front, then we'll call, then we'll bring you up in front of everybody, and we'll lay hands on you, pray you, and receive you into membership, and you will get your membership certificate. Mark? Uh, is that going to be the beginning of service or end of service? Near the beginning of service, uh, after worship. Okay. The front end of service. Any questions about the membership covenant? Okay, in your booklet is a volunteer application, and also a sheet that's called Serving Opportunities, which is basically kind of like the want hands. Okay, <laughs> these two pieces of paper, the serving, the membership, the, the volunteer application needs to be filled out for you. Uh, you need to fill that out if you're going to serve in any areas of the church. There is also, uh, we do a background criminal check on everyone, uh, which the church takes care of, but it is required of all the volunteers if you're going to be working in, near, or around children or youth. Uh, that, that is required that we have to do that uh, because we want to make sure that we protect our kids. And so um, the volunteer act. Go through this serving opportunities and look and see if there's something that strikes you that you would like to help out with. There's lots of needs. The last session is about serving. I'm not going to take the time to teach it or even go through it with you. In your house, there are chores to do, right? The floor needs to be swept or vacuumed or mopped occasionally. Dishes need to be done occasionally. Beds need to be made. Laundry needs to be done, right? Right? Yeah. yeah. Same thing in the church. We need people to help with greeting and ushering and serving. And if you sing or play an instrument, or if uh, we need lots of help in children's ministry, not only teaching or, or you know changing diapers, but just helping in some way. Technical. Uh, technical help. We need help camera operators and and uh, if you have any computer skills at all, uh, we we just need help. So. We ask you to look and to help. Uh, finding your place in the body is all about that. So find out where God wants you to serve and make yourself available and jump in and help out. Any questions? And you want the membership information you said by the 12th. By the 12th. What about the volunteer and the... You turn it all in at the same time. And then the... the, the uh, one of the others will call you, and they'll just sit down, and they, it's just for them to, to ask if you have any questions. They're going to make sure that you're saved, and they're going to ask you if you've been water baptized, and they're asking if you're, if you're serving in any area of the church, 
And if you're not, I'll ask if there's any particular area that you'd like to get involved in if you have any questions. Okay? So we want you to meet you know, other leaders of the church. Any questions? Okay. Uh, so, three hours and 49 minutes. No, three, three hours and 20 minutes. Hold it off. Sort of. Yeah, we came, we, we came close. Uh, you can leave that, Roland. Yeah, so, I... what did you think? Was it okay? Was it too much? Uh, any feedback? Tiring? I think it was wonderful, but yet at the same time, it was, how else can I say, it was a lot. Yes. In order to really digest everything, whatever it was. It was just, you don't get done rushing to the pages, just yeah. to catch up with it. It's not a criticism. No. And I'm speaking only for myself. So because of that, I'm so happy that I can take this at home and read it and see what it says. Otherwise, you were fantastic, if you might know, get it name, but it was too much material to cover in such a short period of time. And this is a very, very, very important material that you presented tonight. Yeah. And I thank you so very much. But this, this is my feeling. It doesn't I know. I want to hear your feeling. I, Mark? <laughs> my thought is I think it's good to do it in a short period of time because it's a large commitment to ask people to come two days in a row, eight hours, whatever you were doing. Wow. And it makes me think of Rev C's material that we teach in China. Um, and you might want to think about doing this. We give those students the book. They have six months to go through that book. And then we come back and spend one week teaching a book that they should have already read. If they have it, there's no way they're going to be able to learn it in our review. So maybe you put together some sort of something that people considering the class would take before coming to the class, and then they've already got that background so it won't seem mm -hmm. like we're getting a ton of stuff. Yeah, no, okay. that would yeah. be very helpful. Right. Thank you. That would be helpful. You can see it. No, I agree with her. It's a lot for one day. My opinion is that maybe yes. in two days, more slow. You are amazing, but fast, 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 fast. Yes. <laughs> I think it depends on the spiritual and the maturity of the person taking the class, too. Because a lot of this is just review right. for a lot of us. But if someone's fairly new in the walk, it could be overwhelming. Right. Yeah. 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 I think a Saturday yes. morning would be better, too. Do you think Saturday morning would be better? Yeah. Not like 9 to 1 or something. Okay. Or I think pressure in the morning. Okay. Thank you. And everybody doesn't retain things like that. It doesn't matter. We're, we're all diverse. We're not all built the same way. Some of us can, by the way, you probably take another three hours. You went yeah. to a conference up in Perry, our pastor sent us to an evangelism class. They crammed like six weeks into a, a two-day, a weekend deal. And by one o'clock that afternoon, I said, I gotta get out of here, dude. I can't take my break. I'm gonna go talk to somebody. I gotta go meet a human being and tell them about Jesus. I'm so full of this, I wanna talk to somebody. And she was ready for another three hours. So you can't judge it that way. But I, it depends on the people. But I do agree the afternoon, uh, a Saturday morning would probably be. Yeah. Okay, good, thank you, appreciate that. All right, any other comments? Questions? Okay, let's pray. Father, I thank you. I thank you for uh, everyone in this room, Lord. Thank you, God, for the gift that they are to our church family. And Lord, I know that you'll speak to each one, and you'll guide them in the best decision for them in the season of their life. And so, Lord, lead and guide us into the fullness of your purpose. Yes. I pray blessing, grace, peace, covering, and protection. Lord God, have your will and way. Bring glory and honor to your name, innocent, through. In Christ's name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, precious.